This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday, January 21st, 2014. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to the Associated Press, as the nation remembered and reflected Monday on the legacy of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., leaders and everyday Americans talked about how far the country has come in the past 50 years and how much more is to be done. At Ebenezer Baptist Church in King's hometown of Atlanta, Georgia, civil rights leaders and members of King's own family spoke about poverty, violence, health care, and voting rights, all themes from the civil rights struggle that still resonate to this day. King's daughter, Bernice King, said there is much work that we must do. Are we afraid, or are we truly committed to the work that must be done? Georgia Governor Nathan Deal said not many states could boast a native son that merited a national holiday, but we Georgians can. Deal said this year he would work with state legislators to find a way to honor King at the Georgia Capitol, which drew a standing ovation. He did not give any specifics, but civil rights leaders have suggested a statue. The only current tribute to King at the state capitol is a portrait inside the state house. Second today, according to Liberty Council, Matt Staver has received a Medal of Honor from the Congress of Peru. He also received honorary medals from the College of Lawyers, Peru's National Bar Association for Attorneys, and from Peru's only national academic accrediting body. Staver also met with the Israel Ambassador to Peru. Matt Staver spoke in the Senate room in the Congress of Peru to an overflow crowd. The room was packed with dignitaries, and many more waited in the hallways. Members of Congress, military generals, Navy SEALs, members of the judiciary, lawyers, high-ranking members of academia, law students, young people, and more filled the room. The message was broadcast nationally on Peruvian TV. Third today, according to Assist News Service, a group of pastors is putting their freedom on the line to bring attention to the plight of Saeed Abedini, a U.S. pastor sentenced to eight years in one of Iran's most brutal prisons for his Christian faith. According to a story by Paul Strand for CBN News, they're calling for clergy from all over America to come to the White House and risk arrest every Monday from now till March 8th. They're saying it's time for more than talk about persecuted Christians around the world. The Reverend Keith Tusi with the League for the Defense of Christian Pastors, told CBN News before he was arrested in front of the White House Monday afternoon that part of our obligation as ministers is not just proclamation but demonstration. We believe that our culture is dying for a model, and we also believe that there are many courageous men in the pulpits in America who understand that it's time to act now. Fourth today, according to Liberty Council, faith-based and policy organizations are urging Congress to block the proposed IRS regulations on 501c4 organizations that will silence these organizations on policy and political issues as well as candidates. The organizations told Congress that the proposed regulation is perhaps the most brazen attempt by the Internal Revenue Service to silence the speech of 501c4 organizations. The proposed regulation prohibits these organizations from publicly speaking to matters of concern, including the following. Prohibits using words like oppose, vote, support, defeat, and reject. It prohibits mentioning on its website or on any communication that would reach 500 people or more the name of a candidate for office 30 days prior to a primary election and 60 days prior to a general election and it prohibits mentioning the name of a political party 30 days prior to a primary election and 60 days prior to a general election, if that party has a candidate running for office, all these among other things. Fifth today, according to the Associated Press, a swirling storm with a potential for more than a foot of snow clobbered the Mid-Atlantic and the urban northeast on Tuesday, grounding thousands of flights, closing government offices in the nation's capital, and giving students another day off from school. The storm stretched 1,000 miles from Kentucky and Massachusetts, but was expected to hit hardest along the heavily populated Interstate 95 corridor between Philadelphia and Boston, creating a perilous commute for tens of millions of motorists. 
Forecasters said the storm could bring 10 to 14 inches of snow to Philadelphia and southern New England and up to a foot in New York City, which will be followed by extreme cold as Arctic air from Canada streams in. Washington, D.C. was expecting 4 to 8 inches of snow. Six today, according to the BBC, the U.S. and the U.N. have reacted with horror to allegations in a new report that Syria has systematically tortured and executed about 11,000 detainees since the start of the uprising. The U.S. said the reports underscored the need to remove the regime of President Bashar al-Assad. A Syrian spokesman said the report had no credibility as it was commissioned by Qatar, which funds rebel groups. The report comes a day before peace talks are due to begin in Switzerland. Delegations are now arriving for the talks known as Geneva II, which open in Montreux on Wednesday and continue in Geneva two days later. The conference is seen as the biggest diplomatic effort yet to end a three-year conflict that has left more than 100,000 people dead and millions more displaced. <coughs> Seven today, according to Reuters, one person was shot to death on the campus of Indiana's Purdue University on Tuesday, and a male suspect was in custody, according to authorities. The shooting took place around noon local time in a basement classroom of the university's electrical engineering building. The shooter seemed to have had only the victim as his intended target, leaving the building immediately after the shooting. Purdue University Police Chief John Cox said it's just a tragic situation, adding that the shooter was taken into custody without a struggle. The police, however, did not identify either the victim or the shooter. University officials said classes had resumed and the campus was considered safe, though the electrical engineering building remained closed. Eighth today, according to the Associated Press, Thousands of supporters of Egypt's powerful army chief rallied in a Cairo stadium on Tuesday, urging him to run for president and saying the third anniversary of the country's uprising should be used as an occasion to thank him and security forces for overthrowing the former Islamist president. The former security officials and army loyalists organizing the campaign called Complete Your Good Deed aimed to boost popular support for Defense Minister General Abdel Fattah LCC, the man who removed President Mohamed Morsi from power in a July 3rd coup. The general has yet to announce his intentions. A referendum that the last week approved the country's new constitution saw an unexpected modest turnout, denying him the robust popular mandate he allegedly sought as a rationale to make a run for office. Nine today, according to USA Today News, President Obama will meet with Pope Francis on March 27th, capping a European trip that will take him to the Netherlands, Belgium, and Italy. In a statement from White House Press Secretary Jay Carney, the President looks forward to discussing with Pope Francis their shared commitment to fighting poverty and growing inequality. During his trip in late March, Obama will participate in a nuclear security summit in the Netherlands and a U.S.-European Union summit in Belgium. Obama also traveled to the Vatican City in 2009 to meet with Pope Benedict XVIII. Tenth and finally today, according to Reuters, Syrian and international delegates arrived in Switzerland on Tuesday for peace talks that few believe can succeed as the three-year-old civil war and geopolitical acrimony it has brought show no sign of abating. Opponents of President Bashar al-Assad, pressured to attend Wednesday's first direct negotiations by their Western backers, cited new photographic evidence of widespread torture and killing by the Syrian government, in renewing their demand that Assad must quit and face an international war crimes trial. War crimes lawyers said a vast smuggling cachet of images from a Syrian military police photographer gave clear evidence of systematic abuse and murder of about 11,000 detainees. One of three former international war crimes prosecutors who signed the report compared the images from Syria with the industry scale and killing of Nazi death camps. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. 
Galatians 6, 7 and 8 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.